I'm back. So a few years ago, I did a review on a plugin called Panagement, and it's by Auburn Sounds. And basically, what it does is it allows you to pan things back and forth. But not only that, it allows you to move things forwards and backwards, which is really cool. So I like this plugin a lot, and one of the best parts is they have a really good、uh, freeware version. But one of the things that I thought they should improve is I thought you know what they need to add like a reverb to this because reverb it sounds even better. But now they've actually done this and they included reverb in this and they've come out with Panagement Two, and so I thought I'd do a review on the new version. So as you see. Here it is.、Uh, you can move things just like before, etc. But、uh, before we get into it and what it does,、uh, let me let you listen to、uh, what we're going to use for the example. So this is just something I wrote a while ago、uh, for strings. So here it is with everything off. So there you go. That's the piece.、Uh, sorry, I transferred the MIDI from a different、uh, DAW, and so the transition sounded a little bit off. So I, I apologize for that. But hopefully, you still get the idea of what it should sound like. So let's go into here, and let me just show you what Panagement does. So if I turn it on here, so as this is playing, I'm going to move this around so you can see how it changes the sound. Okay. So here we go. So you see, you can move it around, and it sounds like it's getting softer. And I think it's probably doing some other things with the、uh, frequency spectrum as you move it backwards. But you can also move it left and right, etc., which is really useful.、Uh, one of the things that might be useful too, if you want to set it back to the middle, you can either right-click like this. Actually, not right-click. Sorry. You can hit here, and this will move it towards the center band. And if you click this, it'll move it right here, like that. So if you're thinking like,、oh, okay, I want to move it here, but ah, it's too far out. I want to move it back to here. Click this button here, it moves it there. And you think, ah, it's off center. I wanted to move it here. Just click this here. So that's a really useful thing if you want to, you know, start over. But besides that, the things they've added are really cool. So here, if you look at the wet, this will actually turn up the reverb. So here's it with it off. Okay, and let me crank it up to 100%. So、you can hear it. It also kind of turned the volume down, which isn't so good. I like it at about fifty percent or so. And on top of that,、uh, you might want to yeah crank up the volume here if I have it up higher like this. And you can change this, as I was saying, by、uh, changing the different rooms. Like I can change、uh, this. Now it's in the heaven, but I can change it to wood. So you can hear the differences in it, and of course you can adjust the size, the tail, etc. So it's really useful in that sense, in in my opinion. You can also adjust the decay here. So I think here this is set in reality how it actually sounds. So if you move it here, and you think、oh, I want to set it back like that, it's easy. And of course you can adjust the pre delay here to、uh, some different values, or you can adjust it freely here. If you look at the bottom here, you can see how many milliseconds it is. 
or if you hit auto, I believe this will adjust it depending on how far it is, which is actually a really useful thing. I think it's on auto by default. So we have everything here. Uh, let's just set this to concert hall. And of course you can adjust the tail and uh, other things here, the amount of bass, etc., which is really cool. Uh, next thing I'll show briefly is this LFO, which is really cool. So I have it set for one bar, four by four. And if you have this where you just far, you see it goes back and forth. If I turn it the other way, it just inverts the phase. Uh, same thing with gain. So it almost sounds like a tremolo. And I really love this visual feedback. That's really nice also, in my opinion. Phase is the same thing with just the phases. For me, like this doesn't have so much of an effect, but you can hear it a bit. Tilt, uh, this is similar, so it's using this tilt filter. Let me just do this so you can hear the tilt filter, so it'll make it brighter or darker. I'll play it quickly. And if I turn this up, it will just move like an LFO, making it brighter and darker. So that's not something you always want, but it can be cool in some situations. Uh, and pan is just moving it from left and right, so it does this. And it doesn't go you know, straight, it's going around in a circle, which is cool. And of course, you can combine many of these together. So I can combine the far and the pan like this to make it do all sorts of different things. So I could do this and play it. And on top of that, I can change the times here to different values, and I can change the LFO shape. So they have quite a few in here, so I could do something like that, where it's just moving all around a little bit crazy. So normally I don't think I would use that. Uh, usually I probably wouldn't move it at all, but there are some cases, like if you wanted to do like some kind of Doppler effect or for like EDM or something, you might want an effect like that. Uh, you see here, I'll do maybe one or two other things. This delay, but this is only for the upgraded version. Maybe I should upgrade. Uh, so anyways, you can do that and you can put a delay on it too, which is really cool. You can check it in mono because sometimes you think like, oh, this is great. And I'm doing a bunch of widening and things, but uh, it sounds terrible in mono. So you can quickly check it, which is a really good feature. Uh, and also, let me move this back. Oh, what am I doing? Click here. There we go. And here. Uh, this also is, I think it's emulating some classic like digital hardware, which is cool, but of course you have to upgrade. So I haven't tested that yet, so I can't say. And there's of course the width knob if you want it to be wider, etc. So those are like the main features, but let me let you hear what this sounds like on a full mix. So let me try to balance this out so the volumes are the same. So let's put this one, violins one here, like this. Okay, so that volume is fairly balanced. Now what I'm going to do is just copy it over to the next one, Violins 2. And let's just change this a little bit. So Violins 2 about here seems good. Violas, let's put those in the middle here. Cellos. I uh, can move about maybe here, I guess. And the last one, bass. Let's try moving it here or so. So I try to do this in kind of like an orchestral fashion, but you can kind of move them wherever you want. And this is really cool if you're using any other type of band too, like a rock band or something. So you can kind of put the drums in the back, etc. So it's really cool for that type of thing. And it doesn't use lots of CPU. Let me see if I can look here in Reaper and see how much it's using. Yeah, let me play it while it's going and you can see the CPU use here.
So to me, that sounds much better. And uh, that's one of the good things about this. This is really easy to use and uh, doesn't take much time to get a good sound out of it. And it can really help, uh, especially with the new reverb added. And you can adjust it so you think like, oh, that's too wet. I just want, you know, a little bit of ambience and then I'll use another reverb after that. You can do that too. So one thing I should mention though is here I kind of uh, did the balancing using the MIDI CCs and to be honest after this after putting Panjman on I probably need to adjust the levels of the faders afterwards so I'd recommend putting Panjman on first and then mixing it as opposed to mixing everything and then trying to put Panjman on there because by moving it uh, farther away it does adjust the volume so you'll find things like hey everything's unbalanced so I recommend doing that last. And one last thing I'll show you is you can actually automate this. So if you think like the LFO is not really doing what I want, I can automate this. So let's go into here. Let's just put it on right mode, uh, right far and pan like this. So as I'm doing this, I'll just move this around so you can kind of, I'll make it seem like it's coming in from the side and then moving forward and then like out the door or something. So here we go. Okay, and then all I have to do is just switch that, oops, sorry, not like that, switch it to read like this, and then start over and play it, and it should sound like it's coming in from the left side and then going out the back to the right. So there you go. And you probably want to change that too. Like that kind of just dropped off when I hit end. But you get the idea. So if you can draw better than I can using this or move your mouse a little bit more steady, you'll get better results than I did. But of course, you can use this for all sorts of creative effects, etc. And this version is free, which is great. And you can upgrade to the full version and it doesn't cost too much. So uh, check out uh, Auburn Sounds and... Uh, Tell me what you think about this. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and until next time, see you.